everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another night of the Summer Mini Skein Mini Series. Tonight we are going to have some fun dyeing some twisted mini skeins in a sort of color fade effect. I thought it would be fun to dye these minis as they came twisted from wool to dye for. Dyeing twisted skeins creates some really fun resist, which we might not get as much resist on a mini as we would on a full skein because there's less yarn overall, but the added benefit is that this will be really easy to dye and flip if we need to. Normally when I am dyeing skeins of yarn, I lay them lengthwise in my pan, and as I add colors here, you get sort of a repeating gradient. But if we lay out the dye in the same way that we've done before, say a lovely rainbow gradient, this time we might get some mini skeins that are just mostly red, others that are mostly purple, and then things in between versus having the rainbow across all of the different minis. And I'm really excited to see how the colors spread, if we have white left behind, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. If I were to do this with say commercial acid dyes or liquid food coloring or something that might strike really fast. I would expect that we would need to flip the yarn and we'd have a lot of white in the middle. Today we are going to use Easter egg dye tablets to dye these minis and I really want to do that rainbow gradient that I've done multiple times here on the channel but on full skeins of yarn and I just want to see what will happen on these minis. The deluxe kits come with nine different food coloring tablets. There's two blues, two greens, pink, red, purple, orange, and yellow. And I will be laying them out in a very planned fashion. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use 18 tablets or 27 tablets for the 200 grams of yarn that we have in this pan right now. Let's start filling our dye bath right here. I have four cups of liquid. That is actually two cups of water and two cups of vinegar. Um, and I think that this might be a reasonable volume uh, to start off with. We might be adding more volume as things go on, but we do want to pre-soak these minis a bit. And we're gonna have them I might end up adding a bit more water, we'll see. Uh, right now I'm just pressing so they can soak in some water and I will go ahead and let this sort of sit here for I think a good 20 minutes. But I will be pressing to try to remove some of these air bubbles to make sure we are nice and saturated. Within four minutes the minis have soaked up all the water so I am adding another two cups of just plain tap water and I'll keep an eye on it. I would say the yarn is well saturated. I am going to add a tiny bit more water and vinegar because the water level is fairly low and we really want our dye tablets to be able to dissolve in here. There's now a total of eight cups of liquid in here. Uh, five and a half cups of water and two and a half cups of vinegar. The reason why we are using so much vinegar is that the dye tablets are basic and so they will raise the pH and if you don't start off with acidic conditions the colors will spread because they're not going to bind to the yarn and they could spread so far that you can no longer uh, really get separation of the colors. I'm hoping yeah, it's still a little bit above the surface. I'm hoping I didn't add too much liquid because I don't want the colors to spread too, too much. But let's get started and start heating this up. I actually went and pulled out one cup of liquid. So we have that mixture with a total volume of seven cups of liquid right now. And I am wiggling things around to distribute heat. Um, until we're ready to start adding the color. I made a rough plan on my phone about how I want to place the tablets 
and now we're ready to get started. The heat is on low and ugh, I hope that I can sort of stick with my plan pretty well. Oh no, almost lost one. Okay, so those were our pinks. Here are the two purples. And then, kind of figure out how this is supposed to go down. Let's do the middle color. So two, four, six, eight, ten. This is our light green. Okay, and then, so then we do one, two, and then we do the reds. About here and here. And then from this end, the purples will there, and we're going to do one, two, and then these blues, right? And then, okay, next to the green, one, two, we're going to do these greens, okay? And then the oranges are just two from our reds. Okay, and then the yellows, oh no, that's a yellow. Shoot. <laughs> uh, all right. It's all good, it's all good. I'm just gonna wipe my glove off. Okay, so I wanted one yellow there, but then I wanted one yellow right here to sort of stagger them. And then a similar thing here, so those are the blues, so one blue is going to go there, and one of the blues is going to go right there. Alright, we've got this going, and now let's do a time lapse and watch these colors spread out. The only manipulation I am planning to do is to come every once in a while maybe poke the tablets down so they can contact the water. Otherwise, I'm planning on leaving this be any spread around the outside edge is going to happen what's going to happen. So let's start the time lapse. After 10 minutes, the colors have spread out really nicely so far. I am going to take that one cup of water that I had removed before and carefully add it to the edges just because I know we are losing uh, some water volume as this heats up. Just to make sure we have a little bit more liquid, but the proportion of vinegar is still the same. But since the tablets are basic, technically we are adding additional acid. Uh, this looks so cool right now and I am beyond excited to open up these skeins and see what the yarn looks like. Um, but yeah, I think now there's definitely some tablets that have not yet dissolved. Uh, I am going to, uh, I guess, come back in another 15 minutes and check and see how things are doing. It's only been about seven and a half minutes, but the water level is looking real low. So I am adding just two cups of plain tap water. No additional acid, but I didn't want anything to dry out or burn. So, all right, now, I'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes later, and up to this point, the only touching I've done has been to poke down in between different colors. Maybe there's a hint of, okay, there's definitely some blues over there. Maybe there's a little bit more green. Hmm. Most of the color has definitely absorbed. There's still a hint of color left in there. I am going to go ahead and shake it a little bit, which as you can see is rolling our friends back there a little bit, but I just sort of want to make sure that we get heat everywhere because the places that have 
the least amount of heat are in this middle section because there's a burner like right here and right there. Um, but you know, I can put it directly over the burner for, for some pops of heat. But yeah, I'm now going to turn off uh, both burners and just leave this here to cool and reposition so you guys can see. Uh, we got some really nice color penetration and if I separate this, like I see some hints of the green, um, but overall like, there's a little bit of a swirl of color, but overall it's not very much at all. Um, so yeah, I'll come back once this is cooled and we'll go, I guess, open up these skeins. It would honestly probably be easier for me to go wash these minis um, as they are sort of wrapped up, but I am dying haha, to open them up and take a look at them. See, ooh, wow, that is awesome. Wow, I was expecting some amount of resist uh, but this is even better than I had hoped. Uh, there's definitely, I would say, some pastel in between in some areas, and it looks like the color penetration is actually pretty good all the way through. Let's try one of the more medium ones, and so you can see that we've got both a pale green and a deeper green on there. Oh, that is so, so pretty. Oh, I am so excited. This is gonna make a really awesome set. Uh, let me go ahead and do one more right now. So this is the end. This is one of the purples. And we see some breaking here. I'm gonna refer to this as color breaking because technically, uh, I could have absorbed some blues that shifted down as well, but I do know that the purple dye tablets will break, and purples in general with food coloring do break. I am now going to go, you know, sort of squeeze out and unravel the rest of these, and then we'll take a look at our fade set. grams of yarn right here so 20 10 gram mini skeins and this gradient is phenomenal uh, this would make a stunning stunning fade set and a lot of times when you're doing a fade you go through some rounds when you alternate between different skeins to sort of blend things together but with all of these mini skeins you don't really need to do that because they sort of act as their own transition. Um, you know, you've got, as you go between the different colors, you have, say, between the more lime green and the more teal, you've got skeins that have both of those colors mixed in there already. Sure, you could blend them a bit together through your knitting or crocheting, um, but you could get a really amazing transition here. And I am just absolutely thrilled with how this has turned out. I did 20 skeins here because that fit into the pan really well, but you could definitely turn this into two different 100 gram sets by say alternating every other skein that you put together. And maybe I'll showcase that towards the end uh, at the conclusions. As I go to prepare to wash this, will I ever get this order exactly the same ever again? Probably not. Uh, I will be putting these mini skeins in groups of five onto some zip ties so that way I can prevent uh, any tingling during the washing. Uh, but I believe that I'd be able to get them approximately back into this order. These are also just so beautiful as four sets of five. Let's wash these minis. 
and I'm going to keep a hand on the zip ties, but first zip, and that is looking pretty good. I will be adding some clear dish soap, a nice little squirt, just to uh, help remove any excess dye or other stuff. Uh, Alright, I might, am I seeing it? Hint of blue? Barely. But I'm going to go rinse the soap out of all of our beautiful, beautiful rainbow yarn. And then I'm going to put it through my Nina Spin Dryer to remove as much of the water as I can. And we are going to now go and dye some more yarn with this technique because we've got some 20 gram minis to play with. Now in the pan, I have 18 mini skeins, 10 uh, 20 gram DK weight minis that are the same 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon blend, and eight 10 gram mini skeins. And I've arranged them in this sort of pattern here, and I will be adding the dye tablets in between every set of two. I am using the exact same proportions of vinegar to water that I used in the first round. Two and a half cups of vinegar, five and a half cups of water, with one cup in reserve to add to this as needed as the water levels decrease through the uh, dyeing process. Whenever I touched the tablets, it was just to poke down to make sure they were covered in the liquid. Um, I always wiped um, my spoon off in between on a damp paper towel so that way I would not transfer any color anywhere on the pan. Here's the finished and cooling twisted mini skeins that has the mix of the 10 gram sock minis and the 20 gram DK minis. There are 280 grams of yarn in here compared to the 200 grams that we had in our very first pan. Rearranged between our 10 gram and 20 gram, uh, we have full rainbows uh, on the 20 grams. We hit all the colors. There's a little bit less of uh, that more lime green, but it's definitely present. And over here, we're missing the orange completely on our 10 grams, but I think that you could still do a really fun fade with this. Maybe I would remove one of the greens but I am now really curious to go and open all of these up uh, so that way we can see what they look like overall. The gradient on these 20 gram mini skeins is awesome. Maybe it's a tiny bit less saturated than what we saw before, but I love that we got so much blending of two colors, or not even blending, but we got variegated two color skeins sort of throughout the whole thing, um, which I think is gonna be so, so fun when knit up. I'm trying to think if there was anywhere I would really try to change the order of where I placed the tablets, because I had, the, the order wasn't just like mini, large, mini, large in the pan, but I'm ultimately really, really happy with how this turned out. And so I don't think I'm going to make any changes when I go do this again off camera. Once again, I think that the, there's so many fun ways you could divide this up. I mean, just splitting it in half. We have two beautiful sets or combined all together. I'm going to go wash this off camera, but you'll see it in the conclusions. I was pleased to see when I unwrapped this that there are some orange hints in the more red skein here. I mean, this one definitely leans more on the green, but I mean, you could definitely just sort of pull one out uh, to get a more balanced set with all of these colors. I am now going to go wash this off camera, put it through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, hang it up to dry, and on the stove right now, as I said, I've got one more set going and bubbling and spreading, but instead of the DK 20 gram mini skeins, I've got the sock 20 gram mini skeins. What if you don't have access to Easter egg dye tablets? Either it's the wrong time of year or you live outside the US. Can you do this with other types of acid dyes? 
Absolutely. Uh, there's no question you couldn't mix up commercial acid dyes or other food coloring and add two little concentrated squirts in between the mini skeins like I did here. Or even like a little line. Uh, and I think that it would give you a very similar effect to what we saw here. You would want to use a lot less acid, of course, but it is still definitely a possibility. If I didn't have more mini skeins that I needed to dye for this series, I would go take all of the Easter egg dye tablets that I have and do this technique over and over and over. I think that the gradients that we created from the two different variations are awesome. And it was so easy to do using the commercially twisted mini skeins. I think that if I twisted the minis by hand before dyeing, there might be a little more variation in terms of the amount of resist, because since these were commercially done, there is more consistency within them. However, you could still create something really similar if you're making your own mini skeins at home. In the first batch, I used 18 Easter egg dye tablets for 200 grams of yarn, but in the second two, I did have more yarn there, 280 grams in the pan at a time. And I had staggered our 10 gram minis with our 20 gram minis, uh, so that way I could create a rainbow and have something balanced, even though I was dyeing different size skeins in the pot at once. And I think what we ended up with is really, really great. We have a pretty complete rainbow on both cases. Sure, this one might have two predominantly lime green, whereas the other ones might have two predominantly orange, but overall you could create a really lovely fade from either of these sets. Since the last batch that I did was a mixture of 10 gram and 20 gram mini skeins that were all fingering weight sock yarn, it would be really easy to mix these back together for a longer fade. And you know, I guess it just shows that you don't need to have mini skeins that are all the same size. We could have started with a bunch of 10s and then gone to 20s, so the grainy, the colors would get bigger and bigger. Maybe as you're going further and further out of shawl, if you're starting like a center out or something like that. But there's many different ways you could play around with these gradients. Similarly, you could take these 20 10 gram mini skeins that we dyed at the beginning and split it up into two different 100 gram sets. I just separated every other one of these mini skeins and we have two 100 gram sets that aren't perfectly matched. They have very similar gradients, but they would definitely not be identical. But it is a fun way to create two gradients, sort of sister gradients in one pan. Here, playing with these minis, I am placing things in rainbow order but you really don't have to play with it that way. Um, I could have separated the bottom rainbow to be half warm tones, half cool tones. You could pick and skip different colors to play with fades. Uh, there's really a lot that you could do, and I think that you can have as much fun playing with these mini skeins and how to order them after the fact as you did dyeing them in the first place. The, te the technique that I did on mini skeins today is Honestly, one of my favorite ways to make some rainbow yarn. Here is some sock yarn that is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. But I dyed this one just with multiple skeins laid out in the pan itself. But then I added the Easter egg dye tablets on in a very similar way. The difference is with our full skein, we will have a repeating or mostly repeating colorway because you'll get a repeating progression of a rainbow. With these mini skeins, you can get more of a rainbow gradient. And so that w ability of separating the colors, even applying the dye in pretty much the same way, gives you a completely different result for how you incorporate this into a finished knit or crochet garment. I am thrilled with the penetration of color we got on these mini skeins. I knew that there was a chance that we'd only get shallow penetration of color, and I had a backup plan if that was the case. But since the mini skeins are so small, even with that resist from having them twisted up, you're still able to access most of the yarn of being exposed on the outside, which is why we were able to get such great penetration of color. 
if I had filled the pan with full skeins of yarn, full 100 gram skeins, and tried something similar, the colors would not penetrate nearly as far. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this episode of the 2019 Summer Mini Skein Mini Series. Make sure that you tune in because tomorrow night there'll be another video featuring mini skeins. There's a whole playlist for this week, so if you missed a night, uh, you can easily see everything that I have created using these awesome minis so far. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure that you're subscribed to the Kenneth Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications by pressing that bell icon so you never miss a new video. Outside of special series like this week, I publish new videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. While you're at it, head over and check out the Cabinets Patreon for cool behind-the-scenes looks as I'm filming new content and more. There are a lot of awesome perks and you should really go check it out, especially if you're already a huge fan of Chemnitz. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.